This build is sponsored by wood to works where you can get quality woods for your luthery, turning and carving needs. They ship worldwide and have a great service to help you choose through their great selection. So the pieces that I've chosen, although they are book match, uh, they are not the same thickness. So what I'm going to do is I want to glue those faces at the same height, which means that I'm going to flip them around so they have a, the same uh, they have the same level here. And then uh, because of the width of that, I won't be able to plane that on my planer, but I'll be able to do that on my uh, drum sander so I'll be able to uh, thickness the whole thing after the glue up to the same thickness. My drum sander can get 17 inches and here I've got 18 and a half so I'm gonna have to trim uh, a bit on both sides on the table saw so what I'll do is uh, highlight where the location is going to be so as you can see I uh, lined up my uh, center line I also made sure that the top side would be oriented properly so it's not flipped the other way so this is the the top side here and that way I'll be able to know how much I can remove on both sides to accommodate for my 17 inches. So I went through the drum sander as well with the top side. That's where I had my uh, layout before uh, I started, uh, just because I wanted to see how good of a glue joint we had. And as you can see, it's very nice and tight. I don't see any gaps. And that's on both sides, so really happy with that. Also you can notice uh, something pretty nice here that that's called silk so that's something that's gonna show when uh, the finish is on the instrument so I didn't expect to have any silk in this piece but there is some so I'm pretty happy with that too. Uh, there seem to have been some uh, sap pockets and I'm gonna redo the layout to see uh, how they, they lined up with uh, with the, the layout. The top one's probably gonna be right on top of the neck block, but I, I wanna see where the other ones line up. Okay, so as you can see, we've got some nice, uh, different, like natural difference of color um, as we go along. Um, right here in the middle, as the growth rings are closer, it gets a bit darker. And as we go out, it gets a bit lighter. There's also those lines you can see here, some of them may have been some sap pockets, but it, all, it call, could also be um, discoloration in the wood itself because I don't see any voids anywhere. So uh, the only way we're gonna see that is when we start carving the top plate. 
So as for uh, when we put the template back on it, if we center it on our center line, we see that one of the discoloration will be in the scroll, which is not a big issue. This one right here may be uh, an issue if it's actually a sub pocket. Uh, at the same time, once we carve it, we might actually remove it, so it might not be a problem. But the neck block is right here in this section, so uh, this side would not be it wouldn't be an issue for this side to crack, but on the other side I might have to put a little cleat on this side. But everything else seems nice. The back side, I uh, have a discoloration right here. This is, I, this is not a sap pocket, but I, I'm thinking when I start carving the back, uh, most of it, if not all, will be removed. And that's the only, uh, it's the only thing I see on the back side. Um, some of you might be thinking, why am I not using this side uh, to do the top since there's only one discoloration and might be removed? It's because this side is not book match. So this was the one side of the log, this was uh, of the billet, this was the other side of the billet. So when, when you do book match, that means that those two pieces were together. And then when you open them, you have the exact same thing happening on both sides. So that's why I want this on top. This line right here is for uh, where the soundboard is going to end and that's where I'll be able to do my dovetail for the neck. This point here is only on the bottom side and that's why the soundboard's got a line here to uh, label where to cut it. So like I mentioned in the previous video, I had to shorten my uh, uh, original drawing and uh, basically what I'm doing right now is redoing uh, the graduation. So uh, this is my plate graduation for the soundboard and then uh, I transcribe all those dimensions to make the cut section of uh, the different uh, cuts, uh, view cuts that I have. So basically what I do is uh, put those cross sections onto a piece of Lexan. So Lexan has a little plastic on both sides and, and then uh, you can spray glue all your layout. Uh, I didn't show how I made those just because when the prints are available, uh, that's basically what you'll get uh, on the drawing like that, that cross section. And then I go on the bandsaw and just cut the, the cross section here. I got my lines and I'll be able to use that to shape my soundboard. remember in the previous video I already started talking about uh, me checking on the weight uh, after weighing the rim at roughly 2.5 pounds uh, so right away with the soundboard I wanted to know how heavy it was to start with I wanted to know uh, how quick the weight was being removed and how much I was getting off uh, after every step so after the glue up my soundboard was at 7.7 uh, .7 pounds which is 35 uh, 150 grams. Um, after I trimmed it on the table saw and that uh, I, I went through the drum sander, 
uh, I was uh, 900 grams lighter at 2650, which is 5.8 pounds. Now, after trimming everything uh, on the, the bandsaw like you just saw me do, but still sitting at the full inch in thickness, uh, the, the soundboard is at 1600 grams, so 3.5 pounds. So I went from the, the beginning board at 7.7 .7 to 3.5, which is more than half the the weight that's already gone um, I already know because I've carved those before that a lot of material will be removed not so much on the inside but a lot of it on the outside so I'm hoping that should be able to remove at least well close to two-thirds of the weight so that would bring me close to one pound for the whole soundboard and that would be ideal because I would be 2.5 plus roughly a pound so I would be sitting roughly at 3.5 which would allow me some extra weight for the back and some extra weight for the neck as well. So where we're at right now, this is the underside and that's where I'm going to start my carving. I've got all my carving profiles here in reference to the letters that I have. Those letters of those cross sections come from my drawing. So as you can see right here, I've got all my cross sections. So those vertical lines are my cross sections both for top and bottom to have with reference to my thicknessing plate, uh, my thickness drawing for my the top of the plate. And then with those, I was able to create those uh, cross sections. Now that we've got that covered, uh, like I mentioned, I'll be using those. So I'll be carving the inside here until this touches and like the, the whole profile touches the, and I do have a center line here and I have a treble and a base side, so I can't really mix it up. So my, my base side will be on the scroll side. So I have to make sure I put it the proper way. Uh, the, channel I just um, did on the outside here is for uh, the final thickness of the plate which is 3 16 on the perimeter uh, all the way around and that's uh, basically how I'm gonna see where to stop carving so you see there's a lot of material on the top side that's gonna have to be removed and I'm gonna have to carve this here I want to come back to this here which is the the stain mark uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, this was not like a, a sap pocket and I want to show you guys what a sap pocket looks like. So this is part of the same uh, board so that was one of the pieces on the outside that I trimmed and as you can see like there's actually a void where the sap actually got an inclusion in there and you can't I, I can't see it from here that there's like a, an actual hole in there. Now, when you look at this one, it's just a discoloration. So my thinking about it, because Sukkah does get some uh, different colors, uh, color marks or uh, stains in them. Uh, so, and that's something that uh, when you grade your wood, like, like a, a, a continuous color, all the same color would cost more than something that's got uh, little things like that. But like I mentioned by carving, probably most of this will be removed. It's right in the middle section where I'm gonna remove most of the material. So even if this would turn into something more like this, I believe would be uh, all removed by carving. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but uh, the the torrified wood has like a roasted smell that almost makes you think of coffee. It doesn't smell like coffee, but it has the same smell that coffee has after being roasted. And that's a, an amazing smell to have in the shop. Thank you. 
okay so I've got about a sixteenth left under the profile here although it's touching uh, most of the way uh, there's a uh, little bumps but uh, minimal bumps so what I'm going to be doing is uh, uh, allow room for sanding further uh, down once uh, all my profiles are in and that way that should allow the edges to be touching because the 16 is not much and I wanted the whole thing to be uh, even so I'm going to move on to the other profiles so at this point I have my four profiles the fifth line here is uh, where my fifth profile is but it's only on the top section and you'll see that when I start carving the top but basically uh, the bowl uh, I'm going to be creating needs to stop at about uh, 3 16 from the line there so uh, now what I'm going to do is empty out this whole section here and uh, in order to do that I'm going to use uh, this gouge right here which is a uh, felt uh, gouge and it's a 535 Okay, so you just seen uh, on the camera, so like uh, the, the cup looks really good, but never only use your eye to, to uh, test. Uh, if, I, if I use my fingers, I can easily see or feel that there's a bump right here in between my two lines. So I'm going to refine everything now with a card scraper just in between and lower it until I'm satisfied and then I will go again over with the the sander just to make sure everything's fine. I got another bump here. Also, another few things that you can see right now is the line that goes around here. So this section here on the from the outside to the line, roughly to the line, is uh, where uh, the side of the instrument is and the end of the kerf. So uh, I, I like to have that here because that helps me uh, visualize uh, the amount of space I have for the, the inside. Uh, so on the top section there's like a, a dip that goes in uh, and then that's gonna go back towards the top and you'll see that when I flip it over. But that gives me a good idea of, of the amount of space I will have for that and right now I, I feel like I'm, I've got enough. Uh, also, if you look here, I did a layout of where uh, the actual uh, scroll section is and where there's material. So I've got the, the, 
neck block right here and I've got the curve right here but that whole section in the middle doesn't really need to be hollowed out but just for weight purposes I will probably go ahead and remove maybe like a, a 3 16 of material here but it, it's not necessary transfer this thicknessing layout onto the soundboard. Okay, so now I've transferred my layout, so what I'm going to be doing is go on the drill press and drill some pilot holes uh, to the proper thickness that my uh, layout tells me. So it's graduated, so it's thicker in the middle here and it goes very, uh, like a lot thinner on the outside. And here in that section that goes the whole way around, it's going to be less than 1.8. Uh, the thickness depends on the material you have to work with. So. Uh, if the grain count is very tight, you can go thinner in this section and overall. But uh, with this one, you can see that the, the grain is uh, not as tight as it could be. Uh, so I'm going to have to leave a bit more material to increase, increase the thickness, uh, the, the stiffness. Um, something I've learned when I bought this material is that torrified wood is uh, stiffer uh, than its counterpart if it's not torrified. So if you would have like that same piece of wood, one piece is torrified, the other isn't, uh, one piece will be uh, stiffer. So I already know that. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and like leave it like just under an eight here. But uh, it, depending on the wood uh, that one that someone gets, uh, it either has to be. Uh, thinner or thicker. out they go deeper uh, and thinner as we go towards the edge uh, so now I'm gonna start carving again
So as you just saw, I, I used the sander to see where I was because with the little Ebex plane here, uh, it gets really hard to see how deep we are at some point. Uh, I couldn't see those holes anymore and now I, I can see that I'm not quite done yet. But if you look here, I can't really do much more in the center. So now I'm going to start going this way from the center and uh, use my little plane again to clean all of that up. some really good progress today uh, we're far from being done as you can see here there's still uh, the tip of the drill bit and uh, more like around the surrounding as well you can see it but uh, we managed to get a lot of the shaping done and uh, like there's still some unevenness I can feel one here but overall uh, looks pretty good so uh, tomorrow I'm gonna get started on the scroll and finishing up all of that. So I was just editing the video and realized that it's getting really long so uh, I'm gonna leave all the finishing of the plate and carving the scroll uh, to the next video so it's gonna be a part two on carving uh, the top or thicknessing the top. Uh, we have the rough shape like I mentioned we still have some little uh, uh, drill heads that's still showing uh, but o overall it, it already rings quite a bit and it it holds its uh, ring uh, is it too thin uh, the only way we're going to figure that out is when the strings are on um, there's some flexibility into the plate and there's still some stiffness in it so uh, I think it should be okay uh, plus there's going to be the tone bars added um, so uh, I want to thank you all for stopping by and watching this part 5 in this Mando cello build. Um, it's uh, slow going right now as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I'm redoing my drawings because I had to shorten uh, the actual uh, uh, overall length of the instrument. So as I'm going along I'm going to redo my drawings. Um, I want to give a big thanks again to Bow River Wood to Works uh, for sponsoring this build by uh, providing most of the wood. Do check those guys out. They have a huge selection for uh, every type of woodworking. They have specialty woods. Uh, go go have a look. The, the, the address is right here and it will also be in the description. Do check my Instagram and my Facebook page. I'm also adding Patreon. Uh, if uh, you, you want to help the channel grow and uh, my content and, and help with my content. I mean the content will always be free. But if you, you guys want to chip in and help out uh, that way, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, so until next time, I wish you well.